Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to acquire memory from Microsoft Hyper-V guest virtual machines. Now, if that topic sounds interesting to you, be sure to check out the sponsor of today's episode, Investigating Windows Memory at training.13cubed.com. This is an extremely comprehensive Windows Memory Forensics course that includes a certification attempt and is surprisingly affordable. It covers both Volatility 2 and 3 in great detail, as well as Memproc FS, WinDebug, and a whole lot more. In fact, you can see the complete course outline at training.13cubes.com, so check it out today. Okay, as you can see, we're in Hyper-V Manager and we do have one running virtual machine called Windows 10 Pro. We're going to start out by creating a snapshot much as we would in VMware ESXi. Only in Microsoft Hyper-V, we call these checkpoints. Before we can create a checkpoint of this running Windows 10 Pro machine, we need to make one important configuration change. So let's head over to settings on the right side. What we're going to do is change the default checkpoint type. Once we click on checkpoints, you're going to notice that it's set to production checkpoints. This is the default. Production checkpoints will not create a snapshot of the virtual machine's memory state. So obviously that's not going to work for us. We'll need to change this to standard. So all we have to do is click the little radio button next to standard checkpoints. And while we're here, let's go ahead and grab this path and press control C to copy it to the clipboard. This is the location in which our checkpoints will be saved and we'll need it in a moment. So now that we've grabbed that, let's go ahead and press okay. And at this point we've made our configuration change. So all we need to do now is go ahead and right click on this machine and choose checkpoint. Now I'm going to do this in real time and you'll see the percentage counting upwards here as it creates the checkpoint. Much like ESXi, it should only take a few seconds. And as you can see, it has completed. So at this point, we should have a successful checkpoint or snapshot of this running Windows 10 Pro virtual machine. Let's go ahead and press the Windows key and R to bring up the run prompt. And now what I'm going to do is press Control V to paste in the path that we copied to the clipboard. I'll go ahead and press enter, and at this point, this should be the location in which we have our checkpoints. Notice that there is a snapshots directory here, so let's go ahead and enter that. And within this location, you're going to see that the largest file here, if we expand the size column, is right here, the VMRS file. That is somewhat akin to a VMware VMEM file, though not exactly. The problem is the VMRS file cannot be analyzed natively within tools like Volatility. Now sure, you could run strings against it, but that's not ideal. In older versions of Hyper-V, say in the 2008 days, there was a utility made available by Microsoft to convert these images into a format that was usable by Volatility and other tools. But that tool is no longer available, and even if you had an older copy of it, it's not going to work for newer versions of Hyper-V as we're running here. Now, if you search for a solution to this online, you're likely to see mention of a tool called Live KD from Sys Internals. In fact, I actually have the Live KD website opened right here. Now, this is a free tool, and as I said, it's distributed by Sys Internals, which is wholly owned by Microsoft. So this is a first party tool. And really the only other thing you need besides this tool is to download the Windows SDK, which I have opened in this tab. This is the Windows Software Development Kit, another free download. Once you have these two things downloaded, you can proceed to use Live KD to perform an acquisition of the memory that you can then use with tools like Volatility. But what if I told you that there was a newer, easier, and better way? We can actually use MemprocFS to do the work for us. In fact, all we have to do is install this SDK that you're looking at here and copy a single file from the SDK directory into the MemprocFS directory and then run our standard memprocfs command with a couple of options and we're done, that's it. So let's go ahead and see this in action and I'll show you just how easy and convenient this is. Okay, let's go ahead and download and install the Windows SDK. We'll choose the download the installer option and from the top right, once the download has completed, we'll choose open file. From here, it's just going to be an exercise of clicking next and accepting the defaults. So for our lab environment, I'm just going to leave everything exactly as it is and then choose install. Now this will take a little while to complete, so we'll go ahead and fast forward it and come back when we're done. And at that point, all we have to do is copy one file from the actual location in which the SDK is installed 
into the memprocfs directory, and then we can run memprocfs to hopefully mount our VMRS memory image. Okay, I stepped away for a bit, and when I came back, I saw this dialog indicating that the installation process has completed. Let's go ahead and click close, and what I'm going to do is minimize everything here. And now let's go ahead and bring up another Explorer window here. And what we're going to do is go into the location where that file exists, the single file that we need to copy here. That's going to be under Program Files x86. And from there, we're going to go down and find a directory called Windows Kits, which you'll see right here. From here, we're going to go into 10, then bin, and then we're going to have some build numbers as you see here. So 10.0.14393, 15063, and so on. I'll just go into the newest build here, which is 22621 in this case. And once in this location, we will go ahead and go into the x64 directory. Once in this directory, the file that we're going to be looking for is called VM saved state dump provider. You will actually see it right there. So VM saved state dump provider.dll. That's it. All we have to do is right click and copy this file. And what we're going to do is paste it into our memprocfs directory. So we'll go to the desktop, we'll go into memprocfs, and that's it. We'll right click and choose paste right here. That's all we have to do from the SDK. And now that we've done that, we can close this and head over to the command prompt where we have memprocfs. At this point, all we're going to do is run memprocfs.exe dash device, which should be familiar to you if you've used memprocfs before. But instead of pointing directly to the VMRS save file, we do have to prepend it with something called hv saved state colon forward slash forward slash. And now we paste in the path. And you're probably thinking, now what was the path again? Well, remember, we do have a window open here from when we actually browse the snapshots folder. Let's go ahead and grab this full path right here and paste it into this location. We'll go ahead and append a backslash to the end and go back. And now this is the VMRS file that we want to point to. Let's go ahead and click on this and I'll press Control A to highlight the entire thing and then Control C to copy the actual file name. Now we go back and paste that in. And that's really all you should have to do. Now, keep in mind that we can use our dash forensic options. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out the top right corner because I'll link to the original memprocfs episode that I released covering this very powerful tool. But just know that at its minimal state, this is all we have to do. We don't have to use the forensic options or the built-in Yara rules or anything like that, though we certainly could. Now, when I press enter here, let's see what happens because hopefully after a few seconds, we're going to get the familiar M mount point. And notice that we do, you can see the mount point right here for M colon. And we also get prompted for a connection to the Microsoft Internet Symbol Store so it can download the symbols and make sense of this particular memory image. So I went ahead and chose yes. And now if we go back to Windows Explorer and then we go back to this PC, notice that we do have our M drive right here. And if we head into this location, well, there we go. There is our mounted memory image. So if I go into name, for example, these are our processes along with the dash and then the PID. You can see all the numerous SVC host.exes, for example. And as we scroll down, you'll see system, vssvc.exe, wininit.exe, and so on. So clearly it is working. If we go back and go into registry and then HKLM, we should be able to explore the registry. So let's just dig into, for example, software, Microsoft, go into Windows, current version, run. So this is our run key. And as you can see, there appears to be one thing here, which is security health. All we have to do is double click on that to actually view the contents. But you get the idea. This is working as if it were just a standard memory image. But in fact, it's not. It is a snapshot taken from a running Hyper-V virtual machine. And that's what makes this really cool. All you have to do is copy that one file from the Windows SDK into the memprocfs directory and then run memprocfs almost as you normally would. The only difference is we're appending the actual file path with that value right there. HB saved state colon forward slash forward slash. So that's how easy it is. And in my opinion, that's much easier than using live KD, though that is another option. So I just wanted to show you this and I hope you find this useful the next time you have to analyze memory from a Hyper-V saved state or Hyper-V snapshot or checkpoint, whatever terminology you want to use.
the actual correct term is checkpoint. I know I keep saying snapshot, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, that wraps it up. That's all you have to do to use Memproc FS with a Hyper-V memory image. I hope you found this information useful. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.